Hey everyone, welcome to Practically. Today, we will be learning the concept of direct and inverse proportions through some problems. We will identify if the parameters in the question are in direct proportion or in inverse proportion. But how do we identify them? Now, let's take an example. Let's take two quantities. If one quantity increases, the other is also getting increased. This means that they are in direct proportion. Or if one quantity is decreasing and other quantity is also getting decreased, this means also that they are in direct proportion. But if one quantity is getting increased and the other is getting decreased, this means they are in inverse proportion. I hope the concept of direct and inverse proportion is clear. Now let us go and solve some problems. Here is the first one, area of cultivated land and the crop harvested. If the area of cultivated land is more, the crop harvested will also be more. And if the area of cultivated land is less, crop harvested will also be less. So what does this mean? They are in direct proportion. Next, the number of workers on a job and the time to complete the job. If the number of workers are more on a job, the time to complete the job will be less. And if the number of workers on a job are less, the time to complete the job will be more. So here one quantity is increasing, the other is getting decreased. What does this mean? They are in inverse proportion. This is our answer. Next. The population of a country and the area of land per person. Now let us assume the area of land to be 1 square meter and the population to be like 5 people. Now I am increasing the population from 5 people to 10 people. Now what will happen to the area of land per person? It will be getting decreased, right? So I am increasing the population, area of land per person is getting decreased. So what does this tell? They are in inverse proportion. Next. The time taken for a journey and distance travelled in a uniform speed. The speed is uniform. So what parameters we have to check here? Time taken for a journey and distance travelled. If distance travelled is more, time taken for a journey is also more. And if distance travelled is less, time taken for a journey is also less. So if I increase distance, time is also getting increased. So what does this mean? They are in direct proportion. Right? Yes. Next. The time taken for a fixed journey and the speed of the vehicle. Now, the journey is fixed. We have to check the parameters time taken and speed of the vehicle. If you increase the speed of the vehicle, time taken for that journey will be less. And if you decrease the speed of the vehicle, time taken will increase. So, what does this mean? They are in inverse proportion. So, this is our answer. Now, this is it for today's session. For simulations, materials, classes and much more, download the Practically app and register to start your free trial. Thank you.